Tonight's webinar is entitled More Than a Coach. And tonight's webinar will be interactive. So what we've got is we've got a couple of polls that you'll see and you'll be able to interact with us. And please use the text box if you have any questions for our guests. We have uh, three esteemed guests tonight. First of all, we have with us a former Grenadian international uh, who was a Premier League, uh, top Premier League striker. And uh, I managed to nick a selfie with him a few years ago, which I've got on my wall. Welcome, Jason Roberts. How are you, Jason? Thank you, Peter. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I hope that selfie was a good one. I didn't have my wonky face on. <laughs> for, for the invitation and the introduction. No, no, Jason, I was the one who made the selfie look terrible. I looked like I, <laughs> I, looked like I had too many wines that night. <laughs> but you look great. You look great. Our next guest is a former Jamaican international. He was a no-nonsense no Premier League defender. And in my opinion, pulled off or nearly pulled off one of the greatest relegation escapes at acts in Premier League history. That is, and he is now currently the boss of League One side, Doncaster Rovers. And that is Mr. Darren Moore. And last by, and last, by, by no means least, we have with us a South African international who has Premier League FA Cup winners' medals with Manchester United and Spanish League and Cup honours with Atletico Madrid. He's currently the new uh, the assistant boss at Reading FC. And that is Mr. Quentin Fortune. And also tonight joining me will be our head of diversity and inclusion. And he's also a Luton and District under-18s lead <laughs> runner-up, Mr. Butch Bazaar. How are you, Butch? Absolutely <laughs> killed me, Mr. <laughs> Augustine. I can't believe it. My only runners-up medal out of all them winners, you mentioned my runners-up one. Thanks very much, Pete. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to... Uh, I just want to, first of all, welcome Jason and also realise that Quinton is going to be on the line very, very soon. Uh, we're just having a few technical problems and so is Darren. So it looks like it's just me and you for the moment, Jason, but I'm pretty sure we've got quite a few things to talk about. So currently, um, Jason, uh, Director of Development at CONCACAF, tell us a little bit about how that came about and also um, how you're getting on in the role. Thank you, Butch. Um, yes, I am... Uh, I did join CONCACAF three years ago as director of development. Uh, how it came about, about really was my interest in governance, my interest in administration, having played football my whole life, coming from non-league and working my, my way up to the Premier League and, of course, playing international football for Grenada, which is the in the CONCACAF region. Uh, very early on in my 20s, I started the Jason Roberts Foundation, which was about coming from Stonebridge, not too far from Wembley Stadium, was about how can I give back to the community which I came from? And that really turned out to me also doing work in the Caribbean. And that led to me understanding or, or at least being involved in governance of an organization like a foundation. Uh, from that, I joined the management committee of the PFA. Uh, and that further really interest sparked my interest in administration. We started the Get On Board course, which really highlighted uh, boardroom governance skills of ex-professional players. So yet again, that was another step in that direction. And after retiring, I did the Masters in Football Administration with UEFA, which was an 18-month course, which really went into the nuances of administration and the ecosystem of football. So having spent a lot of time in and around governance and administration, and I moved to the Caribbean, living in Grenada, I put myself forward for this role, which I saw director of development, and I was very fortunate to be accepted. I'm, I'm very happy to be working with our current president, Victor Montaliani. He was the ex-Canada president, and he had a real vision for how we could reform 
for how we could continue to invest and develop football in the CONCACAF region, which is 41 different countries from Central America, from the North America and the Caribbean. And much of that has been about producing new competitions alongside UEFA. We're the only confederation with the Nations League investing in youth football. We're the only confederation with a U15 tournament. And my mandate is really to look at coaching education, um, to look at professional football, club licensing, uh, to be across women's football with our new head of women's football, Karina LeBlanc, an ex-Canada international, a goalkeeper, which I always give her a lot of stick about, and our core social responsibility. How do we use football as a vehicle for social change? So it's been a wonderful transition out of um, playing, out of being on the pitch. And I'm very fortunate to work with an organisation that really wants to make change and use football to engage and empower people uh, we've also, I've been personally very lucky to work with Steve Smithies, who, who uh, of yeah. course, uh, works with the English FA, who's done a fantastic job. And we've been collaborating on mentorship and helping us to continue to develop football in this region. So it's been an excellent transition. I'm very happy with where I am currently and enjoying uh, the administration of football. Brilliant. Jason, uh, there's a, a load of points there. And first of all, um, I think from the perspective of as a role model as well and as a black role model, um, it, it's great to hear your, your, your journey so far. Tell me a little bit about, you know, it's, it's the third webinar around black history. Tell me what Black History Month means to you, Jason, and um, uh, what what you see the celebration is all about for you. I think that obviously, as you've mentioned, but just different for everybody. Uh, you've asked me for my opinion on it. And I, I choose to take it as an opportunity to champion the great work that's been done by individuals who, who want to create change, that want to create equity, that want to create equality within, within our game. And of course, our game is a microcosm of society. We have issues in society around representation and equality, but I think Football and sport has an important role to play, none more so than now, uh, where conversation and dialogue has become even more difficult with people with different views. And I think sport is a unifier, football especially is, is the global game. And we as administrators, we as fans, uh, we as people who play the sport and love the sport, I think have a responsibility to use our platform in a responsible way to talk about uh, how we can how we can address some of the issues that we have, but also to champion the people who are making great strides and the organizations that are making great strides in these issues. So Black History Month for me is about magnifying these voices, is about promoting the great work that's being done, and also holding, uh, holding up those that are that are doing great work in spite of the challenges that, that has been placed in front of them. So that's what it means to me. I know to many people it may mean something different, but for me, mm. it's how we promote the great work that's being done and give a voice to those uh, doing the difficult work on the ground. That's fantastic, Jason. And J Jason, if I moved you to from your uh, playing career, um, and then you said that obviously you transitioned into this 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 incredible role you got now. Did you consider coaching as, as a viable option for you? Uh, I actually did went through um, my coaching badges and quite early into it, I realized that it wasn't necessarily for me. I, I think that, you know, I actually did my first coaching badge with David Dunn and Stephen Reed, And I realized the passion they had for the content, the passion they had for delivery, for making people better. And I thought, yeah, Maybe this isn't this isn't for me. You know, every footballer, every every person who watches football believes that they have something to offer in coaching and management. But quite early into my um, coaching badge and my coaching pathway, I I really felt that there were other people more passionate, more able than me, and that maybe my skill set would would set me on a roll to do something different. And I really bought into that and committed to that. Um, and, you know, I think it's fantastic that today uh, the likes of Prince and Fortune, who I know very well, the likes of Darren Moore, who I played about West Bromwich Albion, have really found a way to, to, to get involved at, in coaching and management at an extremely high level to, 
to look at the challenges that they face, which are well documented, but also to look at those challenges and to say, yes, I'm going to still go into this. I'm going to commit to this and try to make a difference by being a role model and by, by being successful. And I think we've seen that I was fortunate enough to go to West Bromwich Albion and watch a game against Brighton, actually, and go into the to the manager's office afterwards and spend time with Chris Hewton, spend time with Darren Moore. And that was, to me, hugely impactful. And I just want to commend all the work being done by by the coaches who are, who are dedicating themselves to the game. Just on that point then, um, uh, so the, the difference between where you are now, coach education, where you are now and, and the badges that you did here, is there a fundamental difference? Yes, absolutely. Um, CONCACAF, and this is unfortunate, but you know you have to view it as a as a as a an opportunity. CONCACAF are the only confederation currently without a coaching pathway. So that means, in my role, we've been involved in developing the content of our D license, our C license, of our B license, uh, and going on hopefully to go on and, and and develop the content of our A license and our pro. Uh, we're currently in the middle of creating a coach education panel where we would look at the only confederation currently between the eight member associations who have their own pathway. So this is a transform transformative piece of work we're embarked on at the moment. Um, we're hopeful that we're working to make it happen. But what's really um, interesting for me is this is an opportunity to not only create content, to create uh, the but also work with each of our 41 member associations and those that don't have their own pathway, coach educators. And Butch, you will know the importance in the coaches teaching the coaches. Yeah. And, and education and employment pathway for these individuals. And we're doing that whilst building the curriculum, whilst build, building a coach education panel uh, and being involved at FIFA level on, on discussions around equivalency, both from a confederation standpoint and from a global standpoint. So these are transformative times for us. It's a, it's a, possi it's a, a, a positive in the respect that we're able to learn from the processes that have been put in place by our sister confederations, that's UEFA, AFC, yeah. uh, whether that's CAF, and, and try to do things in a different way to empower our member associations and empower our coaches and our coaching educators. So whilst it is a shame, we are finding a way under our leadership with Victor Montaliani and Philippe Moggio as our general secretary to do something impactful in our region. And I'm, I'm really honored to be part of that. Exciting, of that exciting region. times, exciting times. Uh, Darren has joined us. Darren, how are you, sir? Yeah, really well, thanks. All good um, and great to see, obviously, yourself and, and Robbo online. Yeah, um, great. great to be online. Excellent. Darren, um, six, sixth in the league at the moment. You're flying, my friend. Um, what, what do you reckon? Playoffs or even straight in? Forget the playoffs. No, no, Butch, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as, as far as saying that, really. Just, um, no, it's just been a solid start and we just keep going. It's really, really early doors yet uh, in the league campaign, but we just got to keep going. And um, now the boys are uh, been showing good form, so we just keep it going, man. Excellent, Darren. We were just talking with uh, with Jason about the role that he's got at Concacaf, and he and he mentioned you actually. He talked a little bit about how he was inspired also by the fact that the strides you're making in the game here in England. Um, what what was the transition like from playing to coaching? We've got a number of coaches on the on this live webinar asking questions around what what that was like for you, Darren. How was that transition? Um, for me, Butch, it was um, the transition came over uh, many, many years, really, for me. It was over, like, sort of, when I look back at it now, Butch, I'm talking uh, three, four, maybe five years, even when I was finishing playing, because in, um, I think in 2011, 12, I, I graduated on my pro license when I was still playing. So I knew that I had that way, that I wanted to go that way in the, in the professional game. Um, so even when I'd done my pro license, I was still playing for another few, uh, few more years after that, really. So the transitional for me was sort of uh, planning along the way as I was um, playing towards the latter parts of my career so that when, when the day did come and my career did end, I was going straight into it. And 
Um, I took the under 18s role at West Brom then, and that sort of um, kind of sort of propelled myself into the coaching world because I could have I could have stayed on and played another year, but I decided to go into coaching. So that was my sort of pathway uh, into the coaching uh, world. So, so, if there was a piece of advice for the coaches uh, listening in at the moment around uh, uh, aspirational, intentional coaches, what, what what would it be? What would it be for you, Darren, for those listening? So my advice would be, if, you're ones, if, you, if you're a current player uh, and you're currently yes, going to just microphone. I would say that start you doing your work or... early doors, Butch. Like, you know, if, you, if you're a professional player now, start doing your work because to get to the level that you need to get to, Butch, it's going to take you yeah, four, five, years, six years of continuing learning and development. So if you can, if you can sort of incur that in whilst you're still playing, I would do it that way. Did you call me? If you're, if you're not a professional game and you're a coach aspiring to get into it, then um, obviously you got to get in the coaching courses, but put yourself in and around other coaches that may be at a little bit at a higher level than where you are. So you're always constantly gaining information of them to apply to where you're at, really. So, so let me just say, if you're a level two coach, Try and have a look what the, uh, the, the B licensed coach are doing. If you're a B licensed coach, try and have a look what the A licensed coach are doing. Not to say that you're at their position yet, but what you are doing is seeking information from them and, and applying them to where you're at there. So it's always sort of pushing yourself and your, your mindset and your psyche in terms of where you want to work with and who you, and the group of players you want to work with. That's brilliant. Jason, um, uh, I know it's, uh, Jono's been over there. Michael Johnson's in over there with Taframan as well. Um, so there's, are, are there opportunities um, uh, as well as in England? Are there opportunities wider than that? Oh, yes, Butch. I would say that there are global opportunities. Uh, and I would, take, I would take that point which you mentioned about Michael Johnson, about Taf. Um, becoming, of course, Michael taking the job at Guyana, taking them to their first ever Gold Cup, doing very well, and obviously coming back and being involved in the England setup now. So I think that we have seen how that can um, provide opportunities. Uh, I think we have to view the game as global because it is, and the opportunities are there. And, you know, I would look at, for my situation, um, having played for and understanding the challenges in the CONCACAF region and then coming over and taking this, this role in development. It was really about having, having that global mind, asking myself where my value was and also um, how, how I could get that first step. I think it's something that we have spoken about for many years about some of the barriers, some of the challenges from the, the black community into getting opportunities and, and other communities into getting that, that that first opportunity and then showing what you can actually do. And I think in many cases, that can be the hardest, hardest challenge. Uh, seeing here with the likes of Quinton, with the likes of Darren, people who took and, who've been given opportunities first and foremost, and then were able to take them because they have the required knowledge and the, the, the required um, standards. So uh, that, that's always something that will be a challenge, but I will say that it is a global game and we would be, we will be minded to really view it as such. Thanks. I think we've got Quinton as well now. Quinton, how are you, brother? If you just can you hear us, Quinton? Can you hear me? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Quinton. How are you, brother? Are you okay? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I, I know you've just jumped in on the conversation. I know you've been in and around it anyway. Um, first of all, congratulations. Uh, flying. I, I thought I thought, I thought, thought Doncaster Rovers were flying, but Reading, top of the championship. Here we go. Here comes the big money, Quinton. We just... <laughs> <laughs> just work. Darren and Jason, that was just hard work. Good team yeah. spirit. And, um, just staying humble and just... Yeah, keep the head down and work. Do you know, I was I was thinking about, you know, the conversations we've had in the past, Quinton, and I 
And I, and I look I, I look at your coaching journey and I remember, you know, at the 23s at Manchester United, you did all your learning there. You've got this incredible opportunity at Reading. You've taken a chance um, and it's a sacrifice as well. I think with the coaches listening, I think sometimes they possibly don't understand the sacrifices that coaches have to make. Um, you know, travelling across the country, sometimes across the world when you look at Jason. So, um, a, a message for coaches that need to do the hard yards, Quinton, what is it? Achieve anything. I mean, the, the guys will know if you want to achieve anything in, in your career, make the sacrifice. Uh, made that sacrifice way back in, when I left. For now, I, my family travel tonight, get to Reading one, two o'clock. So it's not a problem. I want to be uh, a manager. I want to manage in the Premier League. Um, and these are the sacrifices you make. So I don't. Uh, have no complaints about it. This is what I want to do, and um, I understand that you have to. I've got to put in the work. And and uh, there's there's no there's no easy ride, Quentin. It's not been easy since the beginning, so I'm used to it now. Um, the position we are now, um, it's never ever going to be easy, and I I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, uh, Denzel Washington's uh, a couple of months said so nice. Said it so nicely. If it wasn't, if it was easy, it wouldn't be uh, 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 so many great actors. So um, it's very. Thomas, hello. <laughs> hey, hello, Junior. Zion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Zion. That is busy. Okay. So yeah, but it's 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 part of the. Uh, yeah. uh, been brought up. My parents taught me that. My grandmother taught me that. It's, it's hard work and. Um, you know, that's not going to be easy. So I accept that. Yeah, I get that. And Quinton, here's one for you then. Um, so we look back at Black History and it's one for Darren as well. I asked Jason already. What does it mean to you, Black History? What does Black History Month mean to you, Quinton? Well, first, when I, when I, say black, when I saw the, the, the quote Black History Month, uh, it's a little bit strange to me because I don't know why they give us a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so hearing think- that. It's more than that. It's just obviously uh, just to raise the awareness of the amazing achievement, so many uh, uh, greats uh, within sport and academics have done before. So just to recognize that and educate the next generation, um, it means when I when I go through now Instagram and I see the messages, it's amazing the amount of stories that come out and to to, to, to uh, I'm learning myself what a, a lot of black people have achieved. So. One of the questions you guys, which was uh, uh, how do I connect with the with the black players now? Yeah. Reading. When I first came over to this country, the first book I ever read was Pele. Now, for me, I, I'm not saying the guys look at me as Pele, but for me, I just saw image of someone who looked like me. So for those players who see me at Reading, they can see there's someone that looks like them. Now, I just saw Pele and I saw what he achieved and I thought where he came from, uh, and I saw the the, the 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 connection, and for these players, if they can just see me there as, as a coach. That's a very important symbol because that shows him. Hold on a minute. There's someone there that looks like me. If he can do it, then so that's that's the uh, uh, kind of uh, hope I can inspire. That's, that's the, pretty. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Moro, um, four out of 91 managers, uh, black, n- less than 5%, um, yet yeah, 35% of players. Oh, where And 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 uh, Jason, uh, the question's coming to you as well, but wh- why are we not moving the dial, Darren? Why are we not moving the dial is um, because we are constantly trying to um, help the authorities to get the professional game and to showcase that uh, they are a multitude of black coaches and and uh, minority ethnic coaches out there that are that are more than able and capable to do the game i've always said it butch the game's in a good place but the game could be in so much of a better place with the inclusion of more um uh, black coaches in the game I have no doubt about it there is a thirst and a hunger for many many more black coaches to get in the game to serve the game and make the game even um, uh, better than what it is now in terms of uh, the, the, the social interaction with a group of players with the, with you see the 
the, the, the diversity that's in the game. So it needs to be at coaching level and you'll get a, a, a huge response and even better response than you're seeing now. So even though it's in a good place, Butch, it can be in a better place. And there is a, there's a whole load of uh, men and women out there that have that professional coaching background ready to serve the professional game uh, at the very, very highest level right through every tier of the football game. So my thing is to always encourage the authorities, people in charge, um, to go for it. And if it's on your heart and that to, to uh, employ or give somebody a chance, then I'd welcome it and champion it to, to go ahead with it. Thank you. Jason, same question. Yeah, thanks, Butch. It's a question that, obviously, being a black footballer myself, Darren Quinton would have heard this, uh, this question a lot. And, you know, I think especially now in the times that we're in, I really think that this question is more to those who have the power to change the dynamic. It's not in my power to change uh, this, this, this current scenario. You quoted the statistics there. Um, it's always interested me that, you know, I've always been positioned as someone who cares about diversity and cares about inclusion. I haven't met many people who say that they are not for diversity and not for inclusion and equality. However, the real difference is what are you going to do about it with your platform, with your position, with the power that you're given, whether you're involved in administration or coaching or management or a fan, what really are you going to do with your platform and your and your opportunity for change? So I would I would take Darren's point that things are um, progressing. We're not where we need to be. Um, the question about how what we need to do really needs to be asked to those uh, who are able to make policy changes to make. Um, to make procedural changes that would really impact this. But what I would say is what keeps me motivated, what keeps me, uh, what, what keeps me positive is on a call like this, seeing someone like Darren Moore, I've been aware of his journey from the start. You knew during his playing career that he had the ability. Quinton, someone I know very well. You look at Eddie Newton at Chapton Spore. You look at Adrian Forbes, head of coaching at Luton. You look at Stephen Reed at Nottingham Forest and Chris Hewton. Um, you look at Dion Burton at West Bromwich Albion, Jason Ewell at Charlton. These are people who, regardless of the challenges put in their way, are finding a way to be involved and to make a difference in their actions. So I would say to everybody on the call or anybody who's, who's listening is that what are you going to do? Because we can all say we're, we, we want to be there with equality and, and inclusion and diversity, but what are you going to do in your practices? What are you going to do day to day? What are you going to do with your time, uh, with your position to impact that? Because if we all do that, then we'll see the change in the numbers that you've highlighted, Butch, and then you'll see the relevant authorities making changes, not because it's right, but because it's, it's the correct offer. Football is a meritocracy on the pitch. Off the pitch, we've not seen that followed on. So what we need to do, every single individual, is to make changes in our everyday life to challenge that. Fantastic. Quinton, I, I, you know, the conversations that we had in the past, but incredible backstory, you know, from South Africa over to obviously starting at Tottenham and then, and, and then your career. We think we've got hardships here, but some of the stories that I I, I remember you re recalling uh, when when you was in South Africa compared to where where you are now, incredibly humble man that you are. Um, where did those values uh, that you you know that you, you mentioned your parents have, uh, have brought you up in a in a certain way? Tell me a little bit about what the what it was like in South Africa in those times. Oh, but I grew up as soon as I left my we we in a Cape flat, so it was either you were playing for sport. Or you were doing something bad, so which means you're involving gangs or drugs. And thank God I played sports because all my brothers uh, was into sports, so that was my image. And the environment I grew up was uh, every, a lot of people play sport, but at the same time, if you weren't involved in that, you can easily fall into the trap of, of getting involved with the wrong people. And uh, uh, we lived in the seventh floor, so I, I think by God's grace, I could look onto the stadium from my from my window. Which was a blessing. But then as soon as I left my house, opened the door, in my face, the guys were smoking drugs. Wow. So every morning <laughs> when I got to school, I was happy. <laughs> I probably high most of the time. <laughs> Walked through this. But um, it was a most amazing upbringing because my grandmother was uh, planted the seed early on about uh, hard work, the humility. 
doesn't matter who, where, what you achieve in life, remain humble um, and, and work. Uh, and uh, I've been taught since a very young age, whatever you do in life, you, whatever you want to achieve, you put God first and from there you work. That's your foundation. So I always kept that and um, I was put, I was very fortunate. And Chase will tell you, myself and Benny, it was just from where we, where we come from and to end up where we were, it's a miracle. A miracle. Uh, it, is a, it is a fantastic story, Quentin. And I, I, I think back now and I look at all the black pioneers of, 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 uh, of not only this, this generation now, but also when I look back and I, and, I, and I think of the lost generation of coaches that we could have had as well. But, you know, we, we're in a, a really fortunate position to have four people in front of us, three Three in front of us now. Pete Augustine's joined us as well. Another another pioneer in this game. Um, it, it's fantastic. It was brilliant talking to you. Please stay on the line. This is a game of two halves. Pardon the pun. The first half is us uh, talking about these questions, and then second half is some Q and A with uh, um, uh, with the public as well. But I know I'm going to pass you uh, back over to Pete now. Um, as we've got you now, guys, if you could hold on with us just for 10 minutes, we'll tell you a little bit about what the FA is doing and some of the uh, initiatives that they've got. Pete, over to you, my friend. Hi. Hi there, uh, everybody. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really loved hearing that. I've been, I've been scribing notes down because it's, uh, it was so fascinating um, and hearing all, all the stories. And i just like to say, Jason, I'm a, I'm a Halsden man as well. Uh, lived in Stonebridge back in the day. <laughs> Yes, brother. <laughs> Maura, great to see you. Quintin, fantastic. Um, and I think a lot of uh, everybody will have got something from that. Butch, you've been doing some great work uh, over the last six months, years. Oh, well, years you've been doing great work, but you've got some initiatives now. Could you tell us a little bit about the uh, coach placement program that you've been involved in recently? Yeah, of course. First of all, we've been doing some great work, Peter. It's it's a joint collaboration. Um, it's only when I'm doing the bad work that I'll I'll take the I'll take the blame for it, or I might actually hand it over to you. The club placement program. Uh, what we've got, okay, is that we've had a number of UA for B bursaries over the past four years, and and we've realised, okay, that we've got a number of Black and Asian coaches now and females in the system. And what we're what we're finding from black and Asian coaches is that um, having talked to them, segmenting them into certain areas as to where their profiles are, some want to just go back to their communities. Others want to want to want to be aspirational. They look look at Jason, they look at Darren, they look at Quinton, and they go, "We want to be, we want to be where they are as well." So what we've decided to do is we realise that we've given them the education. What they need now is the experience and exposure. We've got thirteen clubs of which seven of them are Premier League clubs that have signed on to the club placement programme. They get a season-long placement, Pete, in those clubs. We've just finished a recruitment, but we've got one um, one uh, club uh, with Crystal Palace who are still recruiting until the 1st of November. So if anyone's out there, they've got their UA for B qualification, um, by all means, go on uh, to our website. And I think um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that Matt Jones will be putting the link on as well. So that that's some of the stuff that we're doing at the moment, Pete. That's fantastic, Butch. I think, um, you know, being me being a little bit um, old in the tooth here, I think the coaches now have got fantastic opportunities nowadays, especially now with some of the programmes that have been coming online recently. So what, what I'd like to do now is, 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 is speak, we want to talk a little bit more about some of those programmes. So um, we've got Lee, Lee Brown, who's one of our new coach development officers. Lee, will you talk to us a little bit about the coach development programme? Yeah, sure. Uh, Jason, I think, has, has put us under a, a massive amount of pressure. And I felt he was talking to me when he said, what are you going to do about it? So I think it's a, it's, it's an amazing question. Um, and it's a powerful question. I mean, and just, first of all, thank you for speaking so honestly, uh, gents. And, and it was fascinating to listen to. I mean, as one of eight diversity and inclusion officers around the country, I've just been asked to present and, and just share some information with you. I think I when we, we look at the, the title of the webinar, more than a coach, I had a, a, a look you back. Can hear me? I think back of my playing career, and throughout that that Hi, Peter. career, can you hear me? Yes, I Hi, Peter. Um, um, these are some of a bit of a technical problem, Pete. So I'm just going to jump in problem. and just say um, hello to everybody. Um, uh, Pete, Pete, um, I, I know obviously you're you're part of the coach development team, Pete. So yes, we just. Um, the, the, the diversity inclusion team, Pete, we've got um, um, 
obviously some great people working in it, Peter. And um, we'll just have a little little chat with you about 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 the mission. Um, eight, 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 eight fantastic people um, across the country, and um, Pete, the, the, one of the, you know four key issues are around addressing stubborn uh, stubborn inequalities, Pete. Um, and I know you're really passionate about that, Peter. Um, that, that we still have them in the game, Pete, and we, we still need to to really work hard to, uh, to to remove some of them, Pete. Yes, we do. I think we still see that there is a lack of representation of black and Asian coaches uh, in all aspects of the game, from the semi-professional game right up to the, the, the professional game. And I think it's something that with the programmes that we're going to be running now, we should be able to go into clubs and help the coaches who are in the system to be able to achieve their goals, to be able to coach at whatever level they want to coach at. Yeah. Um, um, and I think we need to find out ways of how we encourage more coaches to step into the game. So if you're an ex-player and you're coming to the end of your career as a, as a, as a maybe a non-league player, a league player, or even as a social player, how do you, how do you get into the game and stay in, stay in the game? Because, you know, that experience that, that, our, that, that our, our, play, our black players and Asian players have are, is going to be vital for them to give us that, 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 that platform to, to normalise uh, black and Asian faces in the game. Um, and the, 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 our new CD uh, coach development officer roles are made to encourage uh, more black and Asian coaches. And also, we want to use a modern and inclusive approach. So using um, things like uh, mentorship, um, uh, you know, modern ways like com communities of practice, those sort of things to help us in that. Um, in that search to get people more more black people into the game and using that digital first approach as well so how can we now use all the modern ways like digital um, uh, webinars like we are on now uh, you know uh, things like teams and and zoom and all the other um, online platforms that we can use to help to help our coaches Fantastic. Thanks, thanks, Pete. I'm just going to, Pete. I'm just going to talk through a couple more slides now. Um, I'll just talk these through with you briefly, just so, so some of the coaches on board know, Pete. We've got uh, a team in the north, Pete, with with Pav and Sarah, um, really passionate about coaching um, in, in in the north and really want to engage and support people. Um, Pete, we've got a team um, in the west with 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 Matt and Lawrence Locke, uh, two, two again really passionate about developing and supporting inclusion, Pete. Um, in the east, we've got Lee. Uh, and Darren, um, again, two two really passionate people about coach development, also supporting um, su supporting uh, particularly black and Asian coaches and and, and getting more fantastic boys and girls um, into the game. Um, and Pete, you're in the South team. I am, and it's uh, and it's a, it's a it's a big it's a big region, and it's a. But the the, the point is, with, with such a big region, you actually can go out and you can. Um, help coaches where they need help in their own environments. And I think that's really, really important. And we've already started some of that work, as you well know, Steve. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and the, the work really has started, Pete, um, as another poll pops up. So if, you, if you've if you got the poll up in front of you, if you'd just like to just pop in your details of where where you are and submit that's really helps us with our with our mapping and support. So yeah, we've got a, a good range of people across the across the country, Pete. Um, and just for a little bit of clarity, Pete, we won't spend too long on this. These are, if you're in one of these uh, counties, th this is um, this is your your uh, coach front officer and, and their email addresses are there. So if you're in Northumberland and Northeast and North Riding, etc., with Pav, pl please by all means get in touch with Pav. Um, if you're in uh, Matt Jones's region, great guy, Matt, really really keen to support uh, Sarah. Uh, in the northwest, looking after Manchester, Lancashire, Liverpool, West Borland, etc. Ple and the, the 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 brilliant county of Cheshire, the Isle of Man, uh, Cumberland. So um, we then go to Loz. Uh, Pete Loz doing a great job looking after those counties, um, doing some great work. Um, Pete, I'm just going to get you just to quickly talk through um, the rest of the region, Peter, please. Yes, we have. Lee Brown, I better put my glasses on. Sorry, Peter, <laughs> I should have warned you. Yeah. I told you I'm, a, I'm of, an old, of a certain vintage, aren't I now? So we've got Lee Brown, who is going to be, uh, he's got Sheffield and Hallamshire, Derbyshire, Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire. 
And then we've got Danny Fenner, uh, who's got Essex, Kent, Sussex, Hertfordshire, Middlesex and Surrey. Darren Moss, um, who's got Cambridgeshire, Huntingdonshire, Norfolk, Suffolk, Bedfordshire and Northampton. And myself, who has Dorset, Hampshire, Jersey, Guernsey, London, the Amateur Football Alliance and the Armed Forces. Thanks, Peter. And really important, Pete, if people want support um, and if people want to get not learn a little bit more about the programme, learn a bit more about um, what we're talking about so in terms of coach development, helping people, um, just 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 drop them a line. Um, Pete, let's move it on now. Um, really, Pete, in, in summary, the team is there and they're there um, to celebrate difference and, and providing support for all, Pete. Would, I'm sure you'd agree with that. Yeah, I, I think we want to ensure that the game looks the way it should look so we've got the people in the places so when we talk about coaches and coaching and coach the team from london or manchester or or, or or birmingham that the coaches all through that pyramid look like the communities that they serve and i think that's really important that the game looks like how it should look and i think that at times it doesn't always look like that no thanks peter and and you know um, again you know please get in touch with 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 the team um if you need any support um that actually leads us really on ex excitedly now uh butch um i believe we're, we're now going to have um uh, a q a q a butch with our, with our esteemed guests absolutely steve thanks so much really appreciate it second half uh lads are we ready because we've got quite a few questions uh First one, I'm going to aim at Mr. Roberts. Uh, Jason, Mark for asks, what do you feel the FA need to do to make it a smoother transition for a black person to become a successful coach after a successful football career? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it, it's sort of unfair for me to single out the FA within the the ecosystem, the environment that we're in in football. There's many different stakeholders who have a role to play. Of course, the English FA do have a role to play. Uh, the English Football League do, the uh, the Premier League, uh, UEFA, FIFA, right across the board. So I think that it's a it's a nuanced question. From the English FA's perspective, I think that, um, you know, it's, 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 it's encouraging to see the work that they've been doing at the, at the levels of the English um, national team, bringing in coaches, uh, to have placements to work with, to work with the coaching staff, I think that's positive. I know Michael Johnson has been involved, the likes of Justin Cochran, um, very good coaches who are getting a great insight into this level. Um, but I think as stakeholders across, and I said earlier, it's really a question um, for those who are able to really inform change. But what we, I think the the overall issue has been around how do you how do you level the playing field? How do you how do you be somewhat, um, how do you take on board the fact that in society that it's been unequal inequalities around development and opportunities for people from marginalized communities, from the black and Asian community, et cetera, gender perspective. And how do we, how do we find ways to create opportunities for them and level that playing field? For many years now, discussions been had about the interview process? Can there be something done around ensuring that those who aren't having opportunities are able to put forward their views, their ideas, their, their hopes uh, from an interview perspective? I think there's something there. I think there's absolutely something there about that representation side of things to ensure that you see that we, um, Peter spoke earlier about seeing yourself in coaching, seeing yourself in management, in administration, and saying to yourself, if they can do it, I can. I think that's important as well. I think in the leadership of our game, across the game, that is important. You need to have leadership who understands the challenges that we face as a community. So I think all of those things need to be looked at. Um, I think that we are past the point of promoting the issue. I think at this point, if you don't understand the issue, you are the problem. I think now we're moving into how do we how do we solve it? And from my perspective, I take solace in the fact that we're at a moment, I think, in our history, we're in a moment globally where we're all asking ourselves, if we accept this is the issue, what are we going to do in our hiring practices? What are we going to do in, in the opportunity for representation? What are we going to do in mentoring someone? What are we going to do in the way we 
we, we speak to people and have dialogue. And I think if all of us can take that on this call, if all of us can take that into our work, then we'll be in a better place. And if everybody embraces that, then whilst we leave the authorities to do their part, we as individuals have a very important role to play, myself included. Superb call to action, Jason. Darren, I've got Carlos uh, DeSantis on the, uh, asking, coaches, no doubt you've travelled around and coached in different countries. What are the differences you see as a black coach, Darren? Um, as, a, as a black coach, what, towards me or, or towards uh, coaching in general? Uh, he, the question mark came back right after black coach. So, I mean, I, I, the way you, you would, you would see that yourself as the question, Darren, um, I, I'm assuming that he's, he, he's, he's wondering whether there would be a difference as a black coach, as opposed to any other. You can only, you can only go off butch um, currently where the, we are um, as a society, really in terms of the level of coaches that we see within in the game. So, I can only go off the the, 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 the fact that in terms of you know here and, and and in overseas really what what I tend to do uh, but yes there is a um, um, a, a, a problematic with the, with the system out there but what we are trying to do is when you're in it such as myself and Jason's alluded to many other coaches of color that's in it and some of us online here now you have a self-confidence within and you look within and you keep working within and you keep believing within what you're, what you're trying to do. And listen, Butch, there's not a right or wrong way how you're going about the game. It's, the, it's where you're at as an individual over the, t over the time, thirsting and hungering after different coaches, different system, watching the game, working with different managers, your playing career always trying to develop in terms of going forward but in terms of being in it butch it's about almost being almost self-assured and self-confident in what you're trying to do um in in a, in a competitive industry and and trying to do that all the the rest of the talk outside of it but you can't do anything about it what you are trying to do is 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 develop yourself as best as you can to impact the the, the, the professional game Aim and to be part of it and getting results or being competitive like every everybody else, um, and if it is people's looking on you as as a sole entity of as a black coach in within in the game because the, the the numbers are lacking, then you just have to keep going. And, and you know, Robbo's alluded to it. You know, Quinton's alluded to it. It's it's just staying humble, and working hard, um, and just keep keep uh, knocking away at the door, so to speak. Butch, would you, mind if, would you mind if I added something to that? Course, because I know go for it, Darren's Jason. very humble and what Darren's not talking about is what he does as an individual, giving his time to causes, mentoring young people, uh, being a stalwart of his community and showing that actually to be Darren Moore is more than just being a good football coach, but actually he's reaching back into the community and empowering other coaches, empowering other people who want to be in administration, etc., from the community. So... One thing for Darren Moore to be a great coach. It's another thing to be, what does he do with it? And I think that's what I've been alluding to in some of my answers earlier is that in Quinton and in Darren, what you have people who are excellent at their job, but more so people who want to encounter this issue by doing something with their position. And I think that's really uh, something I, I know Darren's far too, far too humble to mention, but I'll mention it for him. That's outstanding. And Quentin, I want to go on to you because I know every time we've requested anything at all, there, there's never a, there, I don't, I don't think you've got no in your vocabulary, Quentin. I think you really see it as an opportunity to be an agent for change, to be transformational by, by being in those environments and by really looking at how your behaviours can impact on other people. I think that's a really great point. Uh, interesting question coming in from Elena Moulton. Why is the response from football to black coaches that you always have to work that little bit harder? Um, that's that's what she's saying. That's what she's asking. What's your response to that? Is that for me, Butch? Yes, Quinnan. Ah, oh, that's oh my goodness. That's what I had to do when I came over here. I had to do oh, that was installed in me since a young age. You got to work twice as hard as the next man. Um, but I, like I said, but without even speaking to me or telling me about it, uh, I saw it. I saw my parents the way they work. I saw my grandmother the way they worked. And uh, I had to learn very quickly when I came over here. So 
this is just exactly the same um, as a coach now. Um, and I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge. I, I want to be a top manager and manage like a, in the Premier League. I want to manage in Spain. I want to manage in Spain. And um, I know I have to work three, four times as hard as the next man. So um, uh, I have no, pro absolutely no problem with it. And that's and and I want to I want to go back to to Jason. Jason, you deal with a number of coaches right across the um, you know not only right across Concacaf, but I'm sure they come from right across the globe. Uh, you just see coaches, don't you, Jason? Absolutely, absolutely. And and the hope is that we can genuinely say one day that it is a meritocracy. Um, but we have to understand that we're ch changing perceptions and that we're. We have to be kind to ourselves in this journey because we have to realize where we are. My uncle Cyril Regis in the 70s was, we all know, was one of the first black players and had to encounter huge racism. But more importantly, he had to overcome the perception that players couldn't play in the cold or that they couldn't play up north or that they could. So he had to break down those barriers. So I didn't have to have those barriers placed in front of me. Um, Darren and myself, we need to break down, uh, and Quinton, we need to break down barriers on coaching and administration and management. So the next generation don't have to face those challenges. Um, it's interesting to me, uh, you see, even in positions, a black goalkeeper is something that we haven't historically seen and those are barriers to be broken. So we have to understand that we're early in this journey and we have to be kind to ourselves and understand that we're doing transformative work now. Now that shouldn't take away from the, the intensity and the want for change immediately. But at the same time, we have to recognize that we are challenging these barriers currently and that the the end result of this work will be that the next generation don't have to face these questions they may have to face other questions but they won't face a question on how does a 40 year old director of development uh of CONCACAF operate well jason did that before or how does you know darren moore like you said butch may, maybe do the biggest um uh, survival job at west bromwich albion or quinton at reading these are questions that will be answered um, unfortunately, that the not many of the previous generations got these opportunities, and we need to be mindful of that. But we're doing this for the next generation, and that's why it's important that we're on these calls. It's important that we work with the community. It's important that we're visible, and that we we show that it can be done. And we are agents of change in our work every day. Brilliant, Moro. One for you. Um, uh, you know the the old adage: performers, not planners; um, entertainers, not executioners. Uh, I remember you running out uh, with, uh, with that captain's armband on as a leader for West Brom. We're, we're just as good, aren't we? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we, without a doubt. Uh, you know, just um, it's just uh, continuing, just to just keep keep shining and just keep keep working at that that level. Um, and you know, you, you know, but you, it's not it's not a matter of you know. Uh, just staying humble and, and giving it you're working as hard and and you know myself but there's there's loads out there butcher you know me i never like single it out that way it's just the way it is it's just there's so many out there there's so many that's leading the way now um going going forward you know sometimes when i look back at and i look at the the biggest thing now with with the with the um you know taking the knee um you know at the the, the premier league that was um you know, and the Black Lives Matter was 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 Troy Deeney and Wes Morgan. You know, championing the, the the Premier League captains. You know, and it's been a it's been a re real big, significant, um, poignant, um, physical message out there, and continues to be that way. You know, um, for the players are showing uh, a united front, really, right across all the divisions, and there's so many sporting tiers that are showing that, really, which is great. And you think of. The initiative that those two started in terms of of doing it so again you know we we, we keep working we keep supporting each other and, and we keep the, the messages loud and clear you know in terms of i think everybody out there wants to see the change for good and robo's alluded to it you know the people what, what hold these positions that can see change and affect change you know they've got a whole nation that when they do do it they've got a whole nation behind them um wanting that change as well and the support for them Brilliant. Absolutely superb. It's incredibly insightful, really inspirational as well. Quinton, um, 
you know, I, I, we mentioned it at the start, top of the league uh, with Reading at the moment, Premier League hopefully beckoning, but I know it's early doors and I know we're not even going to, um, even, you're not even thinking about that right now, but what's it like uh, in the dugout? Um, I know there's not a crowd at the moment, so that, that must be weird. It's, it's absolutely mad, but it's because uh, my former, well, my former teammate, uh, Betko Palnovic is the manager, so we played together in Spain. So he's 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 speaking in Serbian and I know a few words and it's just absolutely mad and uh, the work ethic uh, is just ridiculous um, to to be just there on the pitch and just trying to plant the seeds that was, was given to me by so many managers and, and that I've played under and I'm just trying to give that to the players um, how we approach every game how you approach training uh, your behavior the team spirit uh, that desire to to fight for everything and and. Um, I try to give them everything, which whatever I have, and when once you cross that line, um, you know they, we give them the responsibility. But it's most important that the team and 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 uh, uh, forget yourself. Everything's for the team, and eventually your, your own ability will shine. But it's I absolutely love it. I love it, but I miss playing. This is the closest for me to playing football. Yeah. So I I jump, I tackle, I do every <laughs> little move that I can on the bench. But um, I'm getting nowhere near it. But uh, <laughs> I tried to you know, that. you know, Quinn, and I, and, and that's the pure love of it. Any, anyone that's listening or, or, or viewing and, and, and watching you guys and listening to you guys, number one, they're clearly going to be inspired. But I think the other thing that it, it is more than a coach. It's not just, um, I mean, yes, we want to develop players. But I think, you know, with black, black coaches in particular, it feels like you carry a bigger burden, a bigger responsibility, and you need broader shoulders as well. Um, Jason? It, you know, you, you're on the shoulders of giants. You mentioned Cyril, God rest his soul, and 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 others as well. Um, that risk, that burden of responsibility. Um, is it a heavy one? Um, but is it one that all, all of you guys can hopefully carry through? Uh, from my perspective, I can totally understand how it could be a heavy burden. Uh, Quinton's re- um, alluded to it earlier. That feeling that you have to work harder than other people. And I think the only thing you can do, your only reaction to that is to embrace it. Is it right? Absolutely not. Is it a fact? I believe it is. So you have to embrace that and you have to be prepared to do that work like Quinton has been prepared to do his whole life, like Darren has done. Um, and yes, when whether you succeed or fail, there will be an element of your race will be brought into it. You know, that's why they can't coach or manage, or that's why they can't operate at this level. That is a reality, and we've seen it before. And I look forward to a black manager just being bad because he's just bad. And yeah. we've, we've just, just his, his race. But I think, you know, and, and I've, I said it earlier that we need to be kind to each other, that, you know, we need to know that within what we're doing, we're inspiring others. So, yes, you want to be as good as you can be in your job. Yes, you want to be successful. Um, but you want to make sure that you throw that ladder to your community while you're there and give opportunities and inspire people and mentor and, and, and give the real hours, the real tangible benefits that's going to be about change. Slogans are nice. You know, talking about equality is nice. Giving nice speeches is nice. But, you know, I said it at the top of this call, what are we going to do? How many hours are you going to give to it to empower them? How many mentorship opportunities are you going to give? When you're having your hiring practices, are you going to challenge yourself and ask yourself, am I, am I, Am I being part of group think here? All of those things are things that we can affect. And the stuff that we can't affect, then, you know, those will be on the wrong side of this story. But we need to be on the right side of the story in, in regards to the work that we do and recognising that, yes, we're black and, yes, we're from uh, the Asian community. And, yes, things will be more difficult for us. But we'll take it on head first. And once we get there, we'll remember where we came from and we'll give the, the relevant opportunities to those who are behind us. That is fantastic. Uh, well, I, I know Pete. Ho- hopefully, Pete is going to join us. I can I can see him trying to jump on with us. But while while we're waiting to hopefully, it, Pete, are you with us? Not just yet. More, uh, we talk about on the shoulders of giants. Um, uh, you know what? What a fantastic job you are doing, not only at West Brom, okay, but also uh, at, at, I, I was asking earlier, is it Doncaster or Doncaster? Um, and they say, if you're in the north, it's Doncaster. So you can answer that one for me if you want, Darren. But, uh, you, you know, we, we, I, we, I watch you and, and I always look out for the black managers. I just do. 
because there's not many not many around and i'm inspired by the work that you do um what's your what's your message out there for those real inspirational coaches that are uh, uh, are probably at that point where they're going to just about give up still with us darren I think uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm talking to myself or anyone can hear no, me right we now. Can hear you. We can hear you, but please, good, good, please, please, whatever you do, don't give oh, up. Oh, there you go. Please, down. you know, keep going for the chance and the opportunity for them to continue um, to go go forward and continue to to um, get get some leverage in the game. You know, I'll always um, continue to um, encourage them to go forward and to encourage the, the authorities and the and the professional industry to give them the opportunity because there's many a multitude of coaches out there that have shown more than capable of, of doing the, the, the level um, at where the game needs to be. So I'll always continue to, to, to uh, encourage them and encourage the, the industry to, to give them the opportunity. Fantastic. Uh, I, I'm just to uh, hopefully Steve will join us now just to wrap uh, wrap things up because I don't think we can get hold of uh, Pete. And if uh, Pete is around, that'd be great. Or Steve's going to jump in. And if he doesn't, all I want to say before he does jump in is Quinton and Jason, Darren, it's been an absolute pleasure. I think what the coaches have learned uh, from this and uh, the, some of the not only the questions that are coming, but they've clearly been inspired by what you've you've had to say as well. It, it has been a, um, a really, really interesting month in which I suppose we're all still learning about black history. And I think that as much as um, people talk about pulling down statues, my my take on it is simple. We should be putting them up, uh, you know, and, and we should be putting them up with those pioneers that have come before us. And if we can just educate ourselves uh, around um, what, what some of the footballers of the past have done, the managers that, of colour that have done in the past, I think we can learn a great lesson from it. Um, I'm I'm not getting hold of anyone else, and I'm conscious that we're gonna uh, we're we're near eight o'clock. So I'm gonna give last uh, last comments to Jason, then I'm gonna pass to you, Darren, and then Quinton. You can have the last word, Jason. Your last your last comments to everyone that's listening and uh, viewing out there. Thank you, Butch. Um, first, I want to thank you for putting this on and welcome and welcoming me and inviting me. I want to thank Stephen Smithies as well and everybody involved. Um, and the, the English FA, of course. Darren Quinton, always a pleasure to be on with you. Uh, and, and I just think it's about reiterating the point uh, Black History Month is about um, recognising our history. Uh, yes, it's a month, to, to Quinton's point, and it should be 12 months a year, but I think it's important to hold up our heroes and also to recognise that we have space for more heroes. And those heroes uh, don't necessarily have to come from our communities, those heroes that can really change policy, that can change procedures, that can challenge the status quo. Many of them could have a place in Black History Month in years to come. So we look forward to that leadership and we look forward to people recognizing that we all have a role to play. And in many years to come, hopefully there will not have to be a Black History Month. It will just be part of history. That's a brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. J Jason, you can come on every week, mate. I'll tell you, you're out. <laughs> Moro, over to you. Final words, my brother. No, no, just uh, just to say thanks again, Butch, for inviting us on. Thanks for, for um, sort of giving us a visual uh, to encourage uh, the community, um, the visual where people look upon us and see, you, you know, um, people of colour within the industry that they can relate to. Thank you for giving us the opportunity and the leverage to speak. Uh, but more importantly for me, Butch, is to encourage all those online um, just to continue to keep going, just to continue to keep striving, continue to keep believing in uh, his or herself at where you're at. Um, and, and by doing so, you are impacting the game and you are making a change in the game and, and, and never, ever um, think that you're not good enough for the industry because you actually are. And I'll always encourage um, you all to, to continue to press forward and continue developing yourself and learning. Um, success is a moving target, as I said, Butch, you know, so in terms of that, you've got to keep moving with it and you've got to keep developing with it. And I just believe that, you know, with that as well, the opportunities will come because 
that we, we are making noises at the right end and we are trying to do it properly for everybody involved with it. Love that. Success is a moving target. I'll nick that one more. That's a quality line. <laughs> um, uh, last but not least, to my to my brother, Quinton, um, final words. Butch, as, as Jason and Darren just said, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Um, I just wanted to go back in terms of uh, what I said at the beginning of seeing uh, black coaches and Asian coaches in, 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 in position of change. So, so, for example, when I came over here, I went to watch the first game was uh, QPR and uh, Arsenal. Saw two strikers, Ian Wright and uh, Les Ferdinand. This was a wow moment for me. People looked like me. That was a wow moment. So where I come from in South Africa, we never imagined there would be a black president. Yeah. Mandela became president. This was a wow moment. I read my first book was Pele, the greatest player that ever lived. Wow moment. So it's very important that uh, um, uh, Jason and, and Darren understand what they're doing. They might not know it, but this is for me a wow moment. To see to see Darren, when I, we played him uh, uh, under 23s a few months ago, to see Darren in that position as a, as a manager, that gives me so much hope to see like, wow, is someone that looks like me there that can do that? I can do it. Fantastic. When I left United, Mr. Uh, 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 Tony Whelan sent me a nice, uh, unbelievable email, very emotional email. And he was the first guy that took me on these wings when I started my coaching uh, badges, took me down the, on the 12s and 11s of how to speak, the tone of voice, of how to behave as a coach. And he's a black man. So I hope that these guys understand like, that, that J what Jason's doing is amazing, what Darren's doing is amazing. And I hope that we can continue to push because what we're doing is for the next generation, like like the ones before us paved the way. I hope what we're doing can pave the way for the next generation. So as Jason mentioned, they don't have to be <laughs> a month. It'll be just natural speaking about our culture, speaking about our differences and uh, we we'll keep pushing. We're going to keep pushing, Bush. That is incredible. It's not a moment. It's a movement. I'm going to pass it over to uh, somebody who's seen a few generation of coaches. Um, Mr. Augustine, over to you to wrap up, my brother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very Thank you very much, Bush. I know you're going to get me back for your under-18s uh, yeah, yeah, runners yeah, up yeah, medal yeah, yeah. comment. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, apparently, you're still polishing that medal, apparently. So, uh, Thank you very much, gents. That was absolutely awe-inspiring. And uh, I've got to say some of the things that you talked about, the, the idea of giving back to your communities and, and all you gentlemen have done that. And uh, I think that's one of the things that we have to keep doing is giving back and inspiring the young coaches, uh, you know, the young black coaches, young Asian coaches, young female coaches to keep giving back into the communities that they come from so that we can build a dynasty where people can go in and it makes it easier for them. So our next webinar um, is going to be on the 26th of October and it's going to be with Hope Powell, Karen Brown and Alina Moulton. And that's going to be a brilliant, brilliant webinar as well, like all the other webinars I think that we, we, we've done. Um, and if it's called If You Have a Dream, Make It a Wish uh, and, and Make It a Goal. So once again, thank you to our esteemed guests. Thank you, Butch, for wonderfully hosting it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, all the backroom staff who have made this possible. All the people who've come on the webinar, love having you on here. Love your questions. Thank you so much for a wonderful evening. See you all very soon. Good night, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you very much, everyone. Cheers, Quinn and Darren, Pete. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys.